Hey there, <laughs> welcome to the darkness. <laughs> hey there, viewers, and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Sitting inside the 2010 Chevrolet. It's the Equinox. Uh, this has got some major honky going on with it. The money light's on, service traction control, and it says odometer error. And uh, stability track. Did I tell you that? Track control, stability track. Uh, just letting it finish a full system scan here. Now, I'll tell you when I drove it in, uh, it acts like it's in uh, limp mode or even worse. It acts like it's in like fifth gear. You know, it just revs up, just like barely moves, slams into reverse. Uh, no Prindle display, so park reverse neutral drive low is not being displayed. And our, let's see what this thing says. Uh, I just let it go through a full system scan. So, you're live, you're with me. So I'm gonna keep it over here by me. We're gonna read it in the engine. We have a U0101 lost com with transmission module uh, as a current code. Body module, we have a bunch of history codes. We're not gonna worry about them. In the ABS, we have currently lost com with training module, system disabled. Ah, but here's a clue. Let's see, theft deterrent. Uh, history codes. I'm not really concerned about history codes. History code, climate control, history, remote control door locks, history. Let's, uh, I think I've seen a clue already. Let's go back to the beginning here. Uh, when we're up under the engine controller, we're using our Bosch ADS 625 here. Uh, lost comma with training module. But then, same thing with the body mod or with the uh, electronic brake module. So, this is your ABS lost comma training module. But when we look here, transmission not scanned. So, that may not seem important. However, it is because that means our scan tool is not talking with the transmission module. So, that's interesting. And I guess we can prove that. We can go into read DTCs, we'll go into transmission, we'll hit continue. And so it's going to try to read codes out of the transmission module, which I anticipate we will get this error, which we did. Uh, communication of select controller was unsuccessful. Please ensure the vehicle is equipped with this controller, then disconnect tool, reboot, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to reboot. We're not going to call Bosch and complain that your tool doesn't work <laughs> because we have that code in the engine. And it makes sense that we have no Prindle display and traction control and all that stuff because if it can't talk to the tranny, then, uh, you know, nothing's going to work correctly. So, what would I do from here? Uh, we got powers, grounds, and ability to communicate. Uh, this, I don't know this customer. This came from another shop. A shop I don't typically deal with a lot. I was kind of surprised. They called and said, do you want it? I said, sure. So, I think what we'll do, um, I popped the hood. I think, uh, <laughs> step one. We're gonna get a wiring diagram. We'll get them right off our tool here. We'll find the transmission. Uh, we'll find the transmission under the hood. We'll see if it has a connector on it. And uh, if it's easily accessible, powers, grounds, uh, you know, ability to communicate, can line, stuff like that. So we could start a couple areas. We could start right at the DLC. Uh, we could check for 60 ohms resistance in the uh, high speed bus, in the CAN bus network to see if it's, you know, broken wire, something like that. I'm in a way, I'm doubting that that is the case, but we could start there. We could start with powers and grounds. Either way, we gotta we gotta check it all. Um, but let's uh, see if I can get a diagram here. Yes, we have a diagram. Enhance, enhance. Let's find find it. So there, uh, this is our tranny. We have a ground, battery positive, uh, ignition. Yes, we got two powers, two grounds. Um, uh, maybe three ignition voltage ignition voltage looks like a couple of powers uh, Perhaps one is a signal or a wake-up signal perhaps number 15 there the uh, blue wire uh, That is probably the hey hey turn on fella That's what they say and then this talks on two data buses the GM LAN serial data bus and uh, GM LAN serial data bus never mind. It just has one network in and out baby in and out Okay, so let me look at the other diagram. I'll come up with a game plan here, and then we'll uh, we'll attack it. We'll go out and see. But if this connector is not accessible, we'll probably uh, start at the fuse box. We may start there. I don't even know where I'm going to start, to be honest with you. I think we should start where I start with every car we bring in. 
with an unknown battery. And we're gonna have the key on possibly for a while. So we're just gonna put a power supply on it. So that's a smart thing to do. Otherwise, you end up with the whole dead battery routine. The battery on this thing must be hidden. I think it's hidden under the passenger seat. So we'll attach on to the uh, points up here where you would jump start the vehicle. Get this hooked up. And then the fuse box we're going for is right here. According to our diagram, we have a TCM fuse, 15 amp, and a trans fuse, 10 amp. Those should be our two power supplies. So let me get this fired up. We'll get a test light. We'll identify our fuses. And we'll take her from there. We have a functioning test light now. We have to look here. Like I say, there's, whoops, whoa. There's your two fuses that run the module. So we need to find one that says TCM here. Uh, TCM right there at the bottom of the pile. 15 amp agrees with that. That's 15 amp. Now we got to take the little road map over here. 15, that should be on the bottom, of the bottom row here. Stinking kidding me? Uh, let me find one in here that works. Okay, that thing works. I don't think I'm getting into the fuse all the way. These are those little micro fuses. Oh, okay, there we go. Just gotta push a little harder. Okay. So we got power on both sides of that fuse. That's TCM. Now we need to find one that says trans gender. They're much looking, I found it. So that's right up there in the corner, trans. Uh, 10 amp, right below the airbag. That should be this one here. Power. Power, I have power. So we have power on both our fuses. Okay, so now, now we can take and keep on trucking. Let's put the lid back on this because we shouldn't need to get in there anymore. Unless we short something out, blow a fuse. So we're gonna come inside the car here real quick. I took and I grabbed Bob and I plugged them in down at the DLC under the dash. So this is just the breakout of the of the DLC. And we're gonna take our meter here. Get this pig fired up. We'll turn it on bright. Ooh, look at that. And we're gonna go, we're gonna check to make sure our data lines are intact. So we're gonna go pin six and fourteen, can high and can low, and we should have on a normal good day 60 ohms. We got 61, so we're close. We're close to 60 ohms, uh, give or take a smidge, and uh, that tells us that our our uh, our wires, our CAN bus from the data link connector all the way in and out of all the modules, is good because we have 220 ohm resistors uh, in parallel, right? 120 ohms in parallel. Yeah, resistors in parallel. The total resistance would be less than yeah, yeah, right. 220 ohms in parallel should be 60 ohms. Uh, so that's good. I just wanted to, like I said, I didn't anticipate we were going to see a problem there simply because we only have one module that's not talking. Now the dilemma, the connector is way down yonder. I don't know if we'll be able to access that better. So it's where that blue and gray and black uh, cluster kind of all come together there. It doesn't look like anybody's been meddling with it. Uh, visual inspection, looking around there, I don't see any, you know, mouse damage, anything like that. Perhaps we'd get to that easier from underneath the vehicle. Um, I'm gonna see if I can give it the, the classic reach down from up here, see if we can't get the red lock out of it, at least get it disconnected, and then maybe we'll throw it up in the air to see if we can run our tests on it from underneath, powers, grounds, uh, and such uh, from down there. So let's, uh, let's see. So I gave it the classic reach down, got it unplugged. And I was reaching over here because I cannot, for the life of me, find the stinking pin out for this. It's connector X1 on the train. You can't find it. Uh, long story short, wanted to make sure we're going to get the right stuff. So I come down here to take this off. But, oh, 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 what do we have here? Enhance. We've got a case of the green crusties. And that is a white or red with a white stripe. And according to our diagram that I have conveniently sitting right here, that is running from the TCM fuse, 15A. Uh, so, long story short, what in the heck would have gotten it? Did it rub through? Oh, probably. Look at that. It probably rubbed through on its... Oh. Unenhanced. Unenhanced. It probably rubbed through on itself. So, 
needless to say, we still got to get this little guy off, which we will. Look at that. I'm like a mark worker today. Things are just coming right apart. Three, two, one. There's that broken wire. Bada bing, bada boom. We got our ground, our ground. So we got two blacks, whites are grounds. This is a power. Com wires are the tans, tans with blacks and the tans. Then we've got our serial data wake up wire, which is our blue, and then our pink is our other power. But now that's all irrelevant at this point. Let's unplug whatever this is. Looks like a O2 sensor. That way we can kind of get things spun around and opened up here. And I'm wondering. It's a good thing we followed our routine. However, if we did what I said I was going to do, which is come right to this in the beginning, we would have found it in the beginning. But where's the fun in that? I'm going to come in here very gingerly without getting any other wires. Spread a real. center there. We'll see if we can leave that right in its place, hopefully. Let's see if we can't open this up just a little bit more. It's like doing surgery. I got surgery. Okay, I think that's all we need to get. We can leave that tape right on, right? No, we don't need to leave that tape on. We need to take that tape off. Can we get it off? Dude, you need a sew and seam ripper. <laughs> I know, I know. I hear you. I feel more comfortable with a razor blade. More chance for carnage. Let's make sure nothing else was rubbing there and causing issues because we don't want problems down the row ad. Everybody else looks pretty happy. Just so happened to be one of the few wires that actually makes a difference. Actually, all these wires here would make a difference. Let's kind of strip that back. Perhaps we could just do a heat shrink uh, buck connector on there. All right, looks like the green crusties end there. The green crusty stops here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open a bar named the green crusty. Lip right in. Now, a lot of folks send me emails, messages, DMs, they call them, I think, on the World Wide Web, saying that I should use the heat and solder ones. Now, I'll tell you, in the past, I've had bad success with those. Not immediately bad, but bad in the near future. Where, like, I put it in, and then, like, two or three years later, the thing haunts me. The solder joint cracks. Um, I don't know if it's the particular type of solder that they use for the lower temp soldering process. We gotta be careful here because I still got the key on. We don't want to go shorten things out um, or what the story is but uh, I used those in the past. Loved them. They work great uh, but like I say every one I installed came back and haunted me and it was a mess because you know two three years later you don't remember what you did. I mean, I kind of did, but um, once I started seeing the trend as far as what was happening, I was freaking out on the inside because I was like, how many hundred of them things did I use? Fortunately, not many. <laughs> so the old crimping seal has been my go-to if I'm electing to use a butt-style connector, a butt with two T's. Okay, that's good there. Wow, this is going to be an easy fix. Let me get a heat shrinking gun. But I guess with all that being said, uh, that was a long time ago too, so perhaps the technology in them has changed. The solder formula has changed maybe. Um, but yeah, they haunted me in the past, so I'm a little bit gun shy. These, however, have never haunted me.
these shrink down they've got the goo in them so once they shrink fully the little bit of sealant oozes out and then you know the crimp type connection is pretty pretty hard to beat you know that's not going to fail on you unless you did a you know a real wussy style crimp all right we'll let that cool here we're gonna tape everything back up just how we found it so nobody will even know we were here hopefully we're gonna give a little extra love down where this thing sits inside of its connector make it a little extra thick a little extra gravy I wound my tape on the socket the wrong way. What a rookie. I mean, I mean, I got the sticky side down, don't get me wrong, but. I wanted to give it a little extra love down through here. Should have used a 10 millimeter short socket. Oh well, next time, next one we do, we'll do that with. And that should be good right there. Let's do that, hold it like that. Get your razor blade, slit her down. Okay, so that's good. So now we don't have to worry about it rubbing, you know, there, if indeed that's what caused the issue, which it sure did look that way. It's where the evidence was pointing. Uh, let's see, where was this little fella? kind of off to the side. I don't know. Now I feel like a jerk. No, it must come right out the front. It comes right out the front. I can see telltale mark on there. There's that clicker. And we got some clickers up here. Oops. I prematurely clicked. Oh, now you did it. We got to get it launched in the front first, then click it. So there, now we're back to where we began, which is the beginning. Well, we're not quite there yet because we're not out of the... We ain't out of the woods yet until we know it works, so O2 sensors plugged back in. I don't know, maybe I can get this from underneath here. So we're back in the car. I did a full system scan and then just cleared the codes out that were in it. So now you can see that we can talk to the transmission. And then we'll take, we'll fire this pick up. Now I see it still says error up on the uh, odometer, which is kind of bizarre. But I do see that we have our Prindle display back now. Let's see, I got the lights off. I mean, I'm taking, well, I guess we can toggle through that. Interesting error. All right, maybe it just needs to see uh, speedometer input or something first, but. Yeah, we do have our Prindle back now, so that's good. Got all six gears. Let me take and move it, see if that error goes away. Mm, nope, and I did check check here it is counting up uh, the miles I did check trip a here yeah so you see this one up a tenth so that's interesting I wonder what the deal is with that right row so I was looking at service data uh, blah, 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 blah. the odometer will display quote unquote error if an internal instrument panel cluster memory failure is detected hmm uh, that's pretty cut and dry. Uh, before we deem the cluster bad and have to uh, take it out, why don't we just try, uh, you know, killing the power to it? Classic General Motors uh, forgot to put the battery in the car, and when they remembered, they decided, well, let's put it under, under the back seat, under the back of the front seat, in front of the back seat, because that makes sense. There we go. The power is off, battery or the uh, key's off. Uh, I'm gonna leave that unhooked for a while. I may jump from the positive to the negative uh, just to kind of deplete any capacitors here, possibly. Uh, we'll give it some time. I got to uh, clean up the shop and then um, we'll come back and hook it up and see if something changes. Okay, I took care of my stuff in the shop. Let's see, just for poop and laughter. 
Uh, we only tighten it down. Let's just go see. No error, no error, no error. Error. Dang. One more try. This time I got the positive and negative hooked together to kind of complete a circuit. So if there are any capacitors, hopefully they drain down. Come on. Boom, shaka laka laka, boom, shaka laka laka. Error. Even chanting over it didn't work. Uh, the good news is everything else works. Uh, power locks, all that, everything else seems good. Uh, according to service info, you know what we read, it's basically stating that the EEPROM is poached uh, or wherever it stores its data. So we would have to send that cluster out. Why that happened at the same time, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should try to get a hold of our customer and see. Perhaps that was something that was already uh, going on. Don't know. What I do know, though, is that was an easy fix. Uh, why the other shop couldn't find it or fix it, I don't know, but that's not up to me. Uh, Got to bill it out, ship it out, so they can come and get it and all that stuff, and everybody's happy. Uh, I don't know They'll. I don't know if they'll handle the cluster deal or if that'll be my deal or whose deal it is, but I know your deal is to go down there in that comment box, leave a question, comment, criticism, or concern. While you're down there, subscribe, ring the bell, click some other buttons. Uh, that make things happen so you know when we put out videos and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching